Good morning, YouTube. I apologize for not having done a video in a while. I've had a lot of personal things that have come up in the way. Um, but I decided recently to do one because I've been seeing things in movies and I've had people talk to me about this. And if you watch some movies where you'll see someone shooting a muzzle or you'll see like a round ball bounce off a tree and without penetrating, without doing anything. And I've talked to quite a few people that said, well, it'll, you know, the tree is hard enough and a brown ball is soft enough. It'll just flatten right out and, um, you know, it'll be about, it'll be completely flat. I decided to test that theory. I'm going to test a couple with this video here. But the first part of the video is I decided to take my 32 uh, Pedersol Kentucky rifle out. Um, now, why did I use that one? Well, I wanted to use the smallest caliber first when it comes to rifles. I wanted to see what happened with that. And I shot two trees. I shot a live maple and a dead hardwood. And the loads are identical, 311 round ball, 25 grains of 3F uh, shoots and powder. About 10, 15 yards away. And I put a tarp under these trees, and these trees are on my property, so it's not a big deal. Um, the maple, the little maple I shot was probably about six, eight inches around. And I put a, like a four foot by six foot tarp under this tree, so that hopefully the ball would bounce off, and I'd catch it, and I could see what it looked like. Well, that didn't exactly happen. The ball did penetrate the tree about two and a half inches or so, and then bounced out. And it still had enough momentum to clear that entire tarp. I never found it. So the second tree that I shot, this again, another hardwood, but it was dead. Um, same distance, but I was able to shoot downward a little bit because the tree, I laid the tree sideways because it was dead. I actually knocked it over myself. And same thing. It penetrated about two inches or so. But when I went to look at it, you could see the hole. I merely just turned the tree over, and the ball fell out. This is the ball. And as you can see, it is not flattened out. And again, this is a hardwood. I was able to, you know, stick my knife in it. It wasn't rotten. It wasn't punky. I could stick my knife right in it, and it was still hard. It still had a lot of structure to it. Um, it was, you know, somewhat rotted, but not to the point where it was... You just disintegrate. This is the ball right here. And again, this was shot into a tree that was dead, that was, you know, had been dead for a while. Not even a live tree, which would have been tougher. But you notice something the ball isn't flat at all. It's got, you can see that if you roll a little bit, it ro will wobble some. It is deformed. It, I, I will have to take a picture of the small area where the ball penetrated. You can actually see the striations from the wood. But it is far from flat. And again, this is 10, 15 yards away. Not very far. Which really got, and again, it penetrated a couple of inches. It went in. A little it didn't just merely bounce off it did go in just like the other hardwood and if you look at the hole of the live maple that I shot you'll see that it's a nice perfect you'll see the outside of the tree you'll see the circle where the bark peeled off but you'll see the little small hole where the ball went in well that's as far as it went in and it had enough energy to still bounce right back out to uh, far enough away that it cleared a six foot tarp by four foot tarp with no problem. That's pretty substantial. Um, the fact that that ball didn't deform more than what you're seeing here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that these have more energy on them than you think they do. And again, this is only a 32. Now, I would expect a 45 or a 50 caliber round ball to do that. Larger mass, they're traveling more, probably faster. Um, all of these 32s do move pretty quick. They're moving, the last time I chronographed one, about 1,800 or so. You know, from, if, if you really ramped them up to, four, you know, with 40 grains of powder, I'm only using 25, but it's still pretty significant. Um, I've shot this gun out to 200 yards and 
and been able to hit a target area about the size of a man-sized silhouette. You know, granted it has like an 18 to 24 inch drop, but it's still capable at 200 yards. These do not hit the ground and expend that fast as long as you know where to hold. My, my next thing, so what are, where are we leading to here? My next thing is I want to see what kind of penetration this would have on something that would be soft, like flesh. So let me get these out of the way here. And my next test is going to be on this. Zoom out here a little bit for you. That's a decent size uh, that's a set of ribs. Pork ribs. And my intention is I'm going to put this out at 50 yards. And I'm going to see if this round ball, not only what it would hit, to, what it would do to it, but what it does to it when it hits it. And I'm going to hit it a couple of times, hopefully, again, 50 yards away. And I want to see what kind of damage something like even this little 32 round ball, who were all told, I, I have been, over the years, I have heard the myth and the story that a 32 round ball isn't very lethal. It's not a great round. It was certainly, I've heard, I've heard people say this. I've had these conversations that a 32 round ball, all that, you know, it would never kill someone outright. I really beg to differ, and I want to kind of prove, see if I can prove that. Because I can tell you right now, if this round ball does penetrate and go through these ribs, okay, that's your, you know, pork ribs are very similar. Pork is, pigs are a great analog for humans because they're so close, structure-wise. Um, granted, there's no hair, there's no anything on this, like there would a person, but that's still, this is still a couple inches thick. I want to see, just out of curiosity, if this would do, if this will penetrate this. I'm thinking it probably will. Given the impact, I mean, and you know what, it might not, who knows. That's why I'm going to do it more than once. But I'm curious, and I'm going to stake these out, and I'm going to see if, if it is possible that a 32 round ball, again, only 25 grains of powder, and get this, I... A 45 50 caliber round ball, I know they'll do it. I know they'll penetrate that because people hunt deer with them all the time. I've killed deer with large caliber muzzlers. I know what they'll do. Now, I'm not saying to use a 32 caliber on a deer. I know in some states, like mine, it's illegal to use that. I have to, I have to use a 45. But say in some states where, well, gee, I really can't afford another muzzler and I got a 36. 36 isn't much bigger than this. It's a little bit bigger. It's got a little more room on it. I actually prefer a 36 over a 32, to be personally honest with you. But I want to see what the 32 will do on an analog like this, this pork here. And hey, you know, you gotta give me credit. I'm sacrificing a really nice set of ribs here um, to see what they'll do, what this gun will do. So that's my next thing, YouTube. And again, I'm going to set it up for 50 yards. And so the next video you're going to see is me with the camera set up. And I'm going to have a close-up camera on this as I shoot to see what it does. And we'll go from there. Okay, YouTube. I have my pork rib analog set up right... Let's see if I can focus this here. Right about there. There's the prep, the ribs. Right now I'm about 30 yards, so I'm gonna step back about another, pace off like another 20 or so. And step back to right about 50 yards and see what happens when uh, when I hit it with a 32 and what that does to it. Let's find out. Okay, YouTube, here is the back of this piece of meat, these ribs. And you can see the top and the bottom. And the one at the top where, the, where you can feel uh, the piece of rib, you see that's more jagged than it is round. See how the bottom one blowed is more round? That must be the way the, the, way the ball, I mean, this is only speculating, but 
again that's the one the top one is the one that bounced off the rib and you see that's more of a jagged hole um, then of course you got the other two and that hole on the right is pretty good size but all three of these holes are probably the one on the right that's probably a three-quarter inch hole I don't I can't measure it for sure I will take pictures of it and I will I have a, a tape measure on me and I will take some photos and I will measure them just to be exact but this kind of dispels the myth that the 32 against a person wouldn't be effective now granted maybe at 200 yards the ball would have run out of steam but this is 50 yards uh, and these passed clean through you know these went clean through this piece of meat which let's face it you know unless you're a bigger person I mean yeah granted there's no clothing on this there's no denim there's no but still um, these did quite a bit of damage including the one that, that bounced off that rib for something that most people think eh, is a very low powered caliber I mean granted what I hunt deer with this not particularly my favorite choice but if I had to in a survival situation and it was all I had absolutely I would probably aim for the neck or the head but I certainly wouldn't uh, wouldn't not take the shot completely if I absolutely had to which tells you a lot about our founders and a lot of the, our, our ancestors they used what they had and a lot of the smaller calibers they just used what they had on them a lot of 36 and 40 caliber guns were used in the colonial days when they did get the rifles and you can see why they would have been a great gun especially like a 36 and a 40 wouldn't be overpowering on a squirrel but would do this type of damage and more on it probably on a deer so that uh, that gives you an idea of, of why those medium calibers were chosen but there it is YouTube so um, again this is a fairly informative test of what a 32 caliber round ball at 50 yards would actually do on a real target and that being said YouTube have a good day